A Date with Judy. Hello. Hello, Judy. This is Mr. Pringle. How are you, Judy? Oh, my back hurts, and I've got a splitting headache, and I've got the most violent toothache. I feel simply dreadful. Oh, that's a shame. My nephew's home on furlough, and he wanted a date with you. But I'll tell him a that you're... A date? Oh, Mr. Pringle, I feel simply marvelous. That's Judy, folks. Judy Foster, the cutest date in town. Your date with her each Tuesday at the same time is arranged by the makers of Tums, famous quick relief for acid indigestion. Well, now, uh, let's see what's doing at the Foster house. It seems that Father is home alone when suddenly the front door opens and Judy enters with her friend Barbara. Hello, Father. Hello, Judy. Hi, Barbara. Hello, Mr. Foster. Oh, Father, we had the most scintillating afternoon. It was simply gorgeous. Oh, it was just Devoon, Mr. Foster. Devoon? (laughs) Terrifically. And the leading man. Oh, he's so beautiful. Even in those raggedy clothes he was wearing, isn't he, Barbara? Oh, yes. He's Devoon. Oh, it's all coming back to me. You went to the matinee today. Yes. It was the most wonderful, wonderful show I ever saw. What was it called? It was called Love in the Slums. It's about a tragedy in the tenement. All about the poor and oppressed. Oh, it was the most depressing, divine show I ever saw. Hmm. Sounds just like the kind of show I enjoy missing. Oh, Father. Hey, where's Randolph? I thought he went with you. Yes, he went with us, all right. But, Father, do you know he refused to walk home with us? Why? He said we were disgusting. He acted like he didn't know us and walked home 20 paces behind us the whole way. He did? Hiya, Father. Hiya, girls. Well, imagine he spoke to us, Barbara. I'm certainly surprised you're deigning to notice us, Randolph, after the way you kept looking the other way every time we addressed you. Oh, that's all right. On the street where everyone could see, I wouldn't want anyone to know I know you. But here in the house, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Well, do you you have any reason for disowning your sister, Randolph, or are you just doing it for a whim? Have I got a reason? Oh, Father, you should have seen the way she and Barbara carried on in the theater. What would they do? They started crying in the first act, and they didn't stop till ten minutes after the final curtain came down. (laughs) How would you know? You moved into another seat ten rows back as soon as we started to cry. You think I wanted to be seen with a couple of weeping women? Oh, you should have seen him, Father. Their eyes leak like faucets. Well, you certainly weren't very gallant, Randolph Foster. Drip, drip, drip all afternoon. <laughs> well, what happened on the way home? They couldn't have still been weeping. Oh, no, that was much worse. There they were, walking along the street. Oh, didn't you adore it? Giggle, giggle, giggle. Wasn't the hero gorgeous? Giggle, giggle, giggle. <laughs> well, Randolph, after all, girls will be girls. They certainly will, and I wouldn't be seen dead with them. Father, you make him stop talking about us like that. Yeah, Randolph, stop talking about him like that. Okay, but it's either drip, 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 or giggle, giggle, giggle all the time. Hello. Oh, hello, dear. Oh, hello, Mother. I'm furious. You are? Why? I was not elected vice president this afternoon. I thought Henry Wallace was pretty solid in the job. <laughs> I'm talking about my club. To think that Mrs. Whiteman, of all people, beat me by four votes. You know, Mother... Sometimes I think you hate Mrs. Whiteman just as much as I hate her daughter, Tootsie. Why, Judy, I don't hate Mrs. Whiteman a bit. I just think that she... Well, I I just don't happen to admire her, that's all. Mrs. Foster. Yes, Barbara? Have you ever wanted to be an actress? An actress? Well, why do you ask, dear? Oh, I don't know. I was just thinking. I'd love to be an actress. Oh. Well, Mrs. Foster's already been an actress, Barbara. She's had her career. She went through the whole thing and then retired. You did, Mother? <laughs> well, sort of. Well, I personally saw her play the lead in several productions. Oh. There was uh, 17, given by the Ashtabula High School. Well, <laughs> Camille at the Ashtabula Watermelon Festival. <laughs> and uh, As You Like It by the Ashtabula Shakespearean Society. <laughs> I take it the mother was quite a celebrity in Ashtabula. <laughs> well, who wouldn't be? <laughs> well, I wasn't so bad at that. 
Maybe I gave up a successful career to marry you, Melvin. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. You forget that I saw you in all those plays, Dora. Well, I don't like your tone. If I remember correctly, several people suggested at the time that I make a career of acting. Well, they were your mother and your Aunt Mary, I believe. Well, <laughs> anyhow, right now I'd better attend to my more immediate career. I'm going out to the kitchen and cook dinner. Hooray. Dinner? Oh, I wouldn't be able to eat a thing. That play made me much too sad to eat. Took away my appetite. The only thing that takes my appetite away is food. <laughs> Sometimes I wish we lived in a tenement, like those people in the play. Don't you, Barbara? Oh, yeah. They had souls. And bed bugs. <laughs> you ever heard of. Guess what? Tootsie Whiteman broke her leg. Be still, Randall. Oh, Judy, you'll never guess. Oh, Barbara, she's not, is she? Your mother's not going to let you quit school and join the WAC. No, it's even more wonderful than that. The love in the Slumbers cast has been stricken with a flu. Well, that is delightful news. Really, Barbara? All of us? Oh, Barbara, not the hero. No, not him. Only the lady whose husband drinks and the girl who plays her doll. Just those two? Oh, dear me, that is a disappointment. But wait, you haven't heard the best part yet. Don't tell me, double pneumonia has set in? Randolph, if you don't keep still, I'm going to bop you. Well, it seems that it's too late to send to New York for actors. The show's closing tomorrow night, so they're going to fill in the missing parts with local actors. They are? Why, we could... we could... Uh-oh. Barbara, I have the most terrific idea. We could go down and try out for the part. Well, yes, but... What's wrong, Barbara? You seem so, well, unenthusiastic. Well, you see, Judy, well, I already went down and applied for a part. You did? Yes, I did. Barbara, you betrayed me. No, I didn't, Judy. The fact is, I got turned down. Why? Well, the man said mainly because I'm too fat. Too fat? He said I didn't look down and out enough. But I'm not fat. And I could look terribly down and out if I tried. You know, I think the real reason I got turned down was because I don't have an agent. An agent? What's an agent, Barbara? It's a man who represents you in a business way. I read about it in a fan magazine. All the big stars have them. They do? Sure. They discuss all your business for you and get 10% of all the money you make. Really? 10%, huh? Uh, say, Judy, you know who would make a heck of an agent for you? No, who, Randolph? Me. <laughs> Before we find out whether or not Randolph is a heck of an agent, let's look into the pockets of thousands of men and women. You will find one thing always present. That's a roll of Tums. Thousands of people would no more be without Tums than they'd be without car fare home. Yes, literally millions of people now carry Tums as ready relief for indigestion due to excess gastric acidity. They help keep your stomach and mouth in that fresh, sweet state that means so much to your state of feeling as a whole. Get Tums today and try them out. See how much they do to relieve and prevent acid distress. See how much they do to ensure you a sweet and happy stomach. Tums may be had at any drugstore, only 10 cents a roll or three rolls for a quarter. Ask for Tums for the Tummy, T-U-M-S. And now back to A Date with Judy. Well, Judy has made up her mind to try for a part in Love in the Slums. Her brother Randolph is going to act as her agent. We pick up the kids on the way to the local opera house. Judy, I'm getting cold feet. I don't think I want to be an agent. I think I'm going to quit right now and go in the shoeshine business. Now, Randolph, you can't back out now. Not just the crucial moment. Well, remember, you get 10% of everything I make. Which won't be a great deal if you don't make anything. Oh, don't be so mean. Come on. You should be very proud to have a sister who's going to make a success of herself. Hmm. Besides, I've got to have an agent to handle my publicity. What publicity? Well, after my debut tonight, somebody's got to go to the papers and give them a big story. Well, don't look at me. I've got more clients than I can handle already. Randolph, honestly, you act as if you don't have the slightest bit of confidence in my future. I don't. Randolph, dear, what if I should happen to advance you 50 cents? Cash? Cash. Oh, that's a horse of a different color. Hand it over. Okay. But remember, Randolph, it comes out of your 10% when you get it. If I get it. Tell me, do I look down and out enough? Halsey, you look so down and out, you look positively icky. 
This dress I made out of a horse blanket was a wonderful idea, wasn't it? Yeah, only I feel so sorry for the Iceman's horse. He must be freezing. Oh, don't be silly. The Iceman was glad to give it to me. He said this one was getting all worn out anyhow. He has another blanket for the horse. I thought not even a horse would wear what you have on. Well, here's the opera house. Come on in, though. Well, here we are. Who's there? It's the Randolph Foster Agency. And client. And client. Oh, and uh, what can I do for you? We heard you were looking for actresses. And I have a little client here I'd like to have you look at. All right, I'll talk to you in a moment. You'll have to wait, though. I'm interviewing somebody else just now. I'll see you later. Look, Judy. Look who he's talking to over there. It's Mrs. Whiteman. But really, Mr. Mulligan, I feel perfectly capable of handling the part. My background in the theater is quite interesting. What's her background in the theater? She sewed the costumes for the school production of the Mikado. Hey, Judy, let's get up closer and listen. Okay. It isn't a question of background, Mrs. Whiteman. The scene calls for a mother and daughter. And I would like two people who resemble each other. Oh, but that's just it. My daughter Tootsie resembles me perfectly. Really? Poor Tootsie. Oh, and incidentally, she's quite a finished actress. I'll say she's finished. In that case, I might consider you, but I'll have to see her first. Well, I'll be right back with her. Uh, would you mind going out through the theater entrance? I have uh, somebody waiting backstage. No, of course not. But don't you dare give those parts to anybody till I get back with Tootsie. I'll try and remember. No matter what happens, I'm not going to let Tootsie get that part. All right, kids, I'm ready. Ready for you. How do you do? My name is Mulligan. Uh, Mr. Mulligan, I'd like you to meet my down-and-out client, Miss Judy Foster. Well, I, I must say you're certainly dressed for the part. Why, what do you mean, Mr. Mulligan? Well, you don't normally dress like that, do you? Oh, yes, she does. Sometimes even worse. Oh, it's my best dress. And it thinks you don't like All right, all right. Forget about the dress. It's very, very pretty. Well, I uh, take it you want one of the parts that are open. Yes, Mr. Mulligan. And I can't tell you what it would mean to me to get the job. Well, that's very unfortunate, but after you all... You see, you... things haven't been going too well with my family lately, and it's just, well, it's just odd jobs like these that keep us going. Well, that's, that's too bad. And uh, who's this young man? He's my brother. I'm her brother agent. We're too poor to afford a regular agent. Well, your brother's pretty well dressed. Oh, he borrowed the clothes. Oh. Well, I'd be very happy to give you the job, but you see, I'm I'm looking for a mother and daughter. Oh, but who... I have a mother, Mr. Mulligan. And she used to be quite a well-known actress until she gave it all up to support father. Uh, support him? <laughs> he can't get a job. But in times like these, a manpower shortage, I... Why, I thought anybody could get a job. You see, Mr. Mulligan, our father drinks. He... <laughs> oh... I see. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I can't promise you the part, but bring your mother around, little girl. And if she looks as bad as you do, er, I mean, not that you look so bad, but if uh, she looks like you, the job's in the bag. Oh, Mr. Mulligan, I'll never forget you for this. Neither will Mother when she hears about this. Oh, Mr. Mulligan, um, would you please not tell Mother anything we've told you about our, our condition, I mean. She likes to pretend we're... Well, that we're not impoverished. Hates to take charity. She's so sensitive about it. Hmm. Oh, she's just a bundle of nerves about it. Okay, okay. Now, hurry along and get your mother. I'll, I'll have to rehearse you right away if you're going on tonight. We'll be right back. And, oh, Mr. Mulligan. Yes? You've made me so happy. I mean, well, just to think. We'll be able to eat again. Au revoir. Au revoir. Oh, the poor little kids. <laughs> What is it, Judy? I'm out in the kitchen. Oh, Mother, you'll never guess what's happened. You're going to have a career after all. Yeah, drop those potatoes and get out your false eyelashes. What on earth are you two talking about? Mr. Mulligan, the director of Love in the Slums, wants you for a part. He's heard all about you. He's heard all about me. He must have seen you as Camille and Ashtabula. Mother, a couple of the members of the cast are sick, and he's replacing them with local people. Well, he's not replacing them with me, I assure you. But, Mother, it's the chance of a lifetime. And you did say you were sorry you had to give up a career to marry father. I said no such thing. Uh, sometimes, Judy, I think you should try to control your imagination. Judy, what are you wearing? I'm dressed for my part. Well, if anybody thinks I'd dress up like that, just to act... Mother, no. you're going to break Mr. Mulligan's heart. Oh, and may I ask what you get out of this, Randolph? 
Ten percent. Oh, I thought so. Well, both of you can just run back and tell Mr. Mulligan that I have no intention of returning to the theater. I have to make some potato pancakes. But, Mother, if you don't come, Tootsie Whiteman's going to get the part. Oh, I'm glad to hear that little Tootsie and I are the same type. Oh, you don't understand. They want a mother and daughter. Mother, would you want Mrs. Whiteman to get your part? Oh, I don't care who... Uh, what did you say about Mrs. Whiteman? <laughs> I said she'll get the part if you don't take it. Oh, she will, will she? Yes. But the man said he'd hold it open for you and me. Well, Judy, I... Oh, I realize I'm being very silly. But this is once when I'm going to get the best of Mrs. Whiteman. Oh, Mother, you'll do it. How thrilling. I'll run right upstairs and change. Oh, no, Mother, don't do that. Well, why not? You want me to look my best, don't you? Well, not exactly. Well, what do you mean, Randolph? Well, he means that... Uh, well, you won't have time to change. Oh, but Judy, you certainly don't want me to go in an apron. Oh, we have to hurry, Mother, before Mrs. Whiteman gets there. Oh, well, all right. But I cleaned the attic this morning. My hair's all mussed up. I look a mess. Oh, Mother, you look beautiful. And besides, there's no time to change if you want to beat Mrs. Whiteman back to the theater. Oh, well, all right, dear. Ah, oh, women, women. <laughs> Mrs. Foster, I'm indeed happy to meet you. Uh, won't you sit down? Oh, thank you, Mr. Mulligan. My daughter here tells me that you have a part for me in your play. Well, in uh, looking you over, I think I have. I, I understand that in more fortunate times, you too were of the theater. Well, yes, I, I played in quite a number of productions, but I, I gave it all up. Yes, to... yes, Mrs. Foster, I, I know how precarious a living in the theater can be. Uh, and now about the part. There, uh, there aren't many lines, but would you care to read them for me? Oh, of course. Uh, would you mind telling me a little about the part? Well, no. Woman is poor, down and out, uh, forced to support her children. My, that sounds familiar. Uh, Mr. Mulligan, does this character have a husband? Uh, yes, yes, she does, but uh, he's a drunkard. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> who uh, lets his wife and children support him. <clears throat> I, uh, I think you will have a natural feeling for the part. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> well, I just have to make a phone call, and then I'll be back, and we'll run over the script. Uh, we'll have a lot to do before the performance tonight. Of course, I understand. Oh, uh, Mrs. Foster. Yes? Would you like me to advance your salary to you? Advance it? Yes. Oh, oh, that won't be necessary. Oh, now, now, don't be proud. It's perfectly all right. Go ahead and... Well, all right, if that's customary. You see, it's been so long since I had anything to do with the theater. I, I just don't know how to act anymore. Hello? Mrs. Whiteman? Yes? Uh, this is Mr. Mulligan from the Opera House. Oh, yes, Mr. Mulligan. I'm just getting to it ready, and we'll be right down. Well, that's what I called you about. I, well, I just cast the parts. You did? Uh, you see, this poor woman came in and... Well, she needed the job desperately. Her little girl tells me at times they don't have enough to eat. Oh, I see. And I felt compelled to help them. Poor things. The husband drinks. I hope you understand. Oh, well, of course, under those circumstances. They seem to be quite desperate. Is that so? Well, uh, maybe I could do something to help them myself. How kind of you. You see, I desperately need a washwoman. Well, that's very nice. I'm sure the woman will be very grateful. Well, isn't this lucky? The fact is, I need a washwoman a lot more than I need the part in the play. Uh, we'll be back to listen in to the stage career of Judy and her mother. But first, ladies and gentlemen, here's your relief for acid indigestion. Here's your relief for those mean acid pains, that stinging heartburn, and that oppressive full feeling. Take Tums. Tums, spelled T-U-M-S, are made to order for the relief of acid indigestion. They quickly neutralize the excess acid in the stomach. They quickly relieve the feeling of pain and heartburn and heaviness. In a matter of seconds, your stomach is feeling serenely comfortable. Yes, Tums are swift in their relief, and they do it without the use of bicarbonate of soda or baking soda. Tums are entirely free from bicarbonate of soda. They do their work in another way entirely, in a way that you'll like and approve. Don't let acid indigestion spoil another hour for you. Carry Tums with you, and the first sign of any distress, put one or two in your mouth. Get Tums tonight at any drugstore, only ten cents a roll. And now back to A Date with Judy. <laughs> Well, uh, 
Judy has pretended that she and her mother are extremely poverty-stricken in order to get a part in a play that's running at the opera house. Mother, of course, doesn't know what Judy has led the manager to believe. Now we pick up father just as he comes home from work. Oh? Anybody home? Only me, father. Oh, where is everybody? Everybody's acting. Acting? Yeah, father. Very shortly, you will be pointed out on the streets as the husband of that famous Dora Foster. Well, what are you talking about? Well, Mother and Judy are rehearsing Love in the Slums. Are you kidding? No. The two members of the cast got sick. Mother and Judy took over, and I'm cooking dinner. Well, I can't believe it. <laughs> Judy, yes, but your mother... <laughs> you don't know the half of it. Well, it certainly is a new experience to have the women folk out earning a living for us. <laughs> well, Randolph, what say we go out someplace to dinner? Why, Father... You sound as if you don't care for my cooking. Well, I'm not going to take any chances on finding out if I care for it or not. I tell you what we do, let's celebrate. We'll have dinner out and go to the theater afterwards. But, Father, I have a pan full of biscuits I'll boy Scott in the oven. They'll spoil. If they haven't already spoiled. Hey, go wash your face, son, and I'll call up the theater and order a box. A box? Well, sure. The best is none too good for the wealthy Foster family. <laughs> Time. Five minutes. Oh, I'm so excited. I hope I don't forget my line. Well, you have only two, Judy. I know, but what if I give the second line first and the first line second? Oh, calm down, calm down. You'll be fine. Well, that's all right for you to say. You've had experience, but me? Oh, jeepers. Tootsie, do you see who that is up there on the stage? It's Mrs. Foster. Please do not evict us, sir. No, please don't, sir. My mother will earn me money for the rent somehow. And Judy, too. Tootsie, can you believe it? So the Fosters got our paws. Oh, sir, not in the cold. I'll take in washing. You take in washing, see? take in washing. Tootsie, either Mrs. Foster pulled a fast one on, well, to get the part away from me, or Mr. Foster is a drunkard, and I never knew it. Well, the first act was wonderful, simply marvelous. Don't fall out of the box, Father. <laughs> well, I'm just leaning over to make sure your mother and sister hear my clapping. Father, was Mother's acting any better in Ashtabula? <laughs> Why, Randolph, what do you mean? I thought your mother was simply splendid tonight. The way she read that line, please do not evict us. Such feeling. I am now able to understand what the theater goers of Ashtabula went through a few decades ago. Oh, darn it, the applause has died down. I'm going to start it up again. Father, everybody's looking at you. Huh? Do you realize that you're the only one clapping? Well, I'm the only one here related to two members of the cast. Well, Tootsie, it was a good show, wasn't it? Well. All except Mrs. Foster and Judy, whom I thought were terrible. Well, come on, let's go. All right, Mother. Tootsie. Look who's coming toward us and weaving like a fool, Mr. Foster. Hello, Mrs. Whiteburn. The way he's acting. Well, I think he does drink up all the money he makes. You hold Mrs. Whiteburn. I'm just going to snub him. That's what I'm going to do, snub him. Well, how'd you like it, Mrs. Whiteburn? Melvin Foster, all I can say is that you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Uh huh? Making the women in your family work and slave to support you, while you, you carouse in boxes. Why, Mrs. Whiteman? Don't you, Mrs. Whiteman, me, you, you, you drunkard? <laughs> again. Oh, it seems a thousand years since I left the house this afternoon. Dora, I can't understand it. I simply can't understand it. The way Mrs. Whiteman spoke to me. Oh, probably just sheer jealousy, dear. <laughs> probably. But do you realize what that woman called me? She called me a, a drunkard. Now, who's that? Probably your bootlegger. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer, Father, dear. Why, Mr. Mulligan. Good evening. Oh, Mr. Mulligan, how nice of you to call on us. I don't believe you've met my husband, Mr. Foster. How do you do, Mr. Mulligan? How do you do? Great show tonight. Great. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Foster, I just thought I'd... Well, this package wasn't quite ready by the time you left the theater, so I thought I'd bring it over. A package for me, Mr. Mulligan? Yes, yes, this. Oh, how nice. Uh, mm, mighty nice house you have here. Of course, we can't afford it. How sweet of you to bring me flowers. Oh, Oh, it's not flowers. No, no, it's just something the cast got together. Why, they're clothes. And here's a card. Well, read it, dear. For the courageous Mrs. Forster. 
Now, isn't that sweet? I hope you won't mind, but these clothes still have some wear in them, and I thought you might use them for yourself and your little girl. Yours truly, the wardrobe mistress. <clears throat> A very generous woman, Mrs. Duval. But I don't understand. Well, I've got to be running along. Uh, well, before I go, Mr. Foster. Yeah? A word of advice. At one time, I too was what you might call, well... Not quite a teetotaler. <laughs> but I took the kitty cure, and it made a new man out of me. The kitty cure? Yes. Just four months in a sanitarium, and now I can honestly say I haven't touched a drop in 20 years. Well, so long. Well, but I haven't touched a drop in 20 years either. Uh, hardly. Never mind, Father. He's gone. Is everybody crazy? I don't get this at all. Well, I don't either. Now, these clothes he gave me, why, they're nearly worn out. Mrs. Whiteman, and old clothes, and, and now they're the kitty cure. Judy? Father, there's a slight something I ought to explain to you. I might have known. Well, Judy, talk fast. Well, in order to get the job for Mother and me, I found it necessary to imply that you... that you... Go on. Well, that you... Drink. Did I drink? <laughs> Judy, how could you do this to me? I'm sorry, Father, but I did it for the theater. Mother said she hated giving up her career. Why, I loved giving up my career. There's nothing in the world I wanted so much as a home and a family. Oh, and now Mrs. Whiteman's probably spread it all over town. And we're... Drunkards and paupers. <laughs> now, Father, don't be so mad at Judy. Young man, I... Now, now wait a minute, Father. After all, she could have said you were a dope fiend. Oh, for the love of heaven. <laughs> Judy certainly fixed things up this time. We'll see in a moment just how she straightens them out. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, uh, were you ever sitting in the movies and suffered a spell of acid indigestion? You know the misery you went through. If you didn't leave the theater altogether, you enjoyed very little of the show. Well, when you have Tums with you, you're always prepared for acid indigestion distress. All you need do is slip one or two Tums in your mouth. You don't have to go to any bother. You don't have to have any water. Just take one or two Tums as you would candy mints, and relief is yours. Tums quickly relieve the indigestion due to excess gastric acidity. Yes, they give prompt and decisive relief, and do it without the use of bicarbonate of soda. Tums contain no baking soda or bicarbonate of soda at all. Carry Tums with you as your first aid in case of acid indigestion distress. They're sold at all drug stores, ten cents a roll or three rolls for a quarter. Ask definitely for Tums for the Tummy, T-U-M-S. There are many imitations of Tums, but no substitute for them. And here's Judy again. Mother? Mother? Yes, dear? I just explained everything to Mrs. Whiteman. I confessed all. You did? Well, what'd she say? That she was sorry she said such awful things about us to people, but that she'd go around among all her friends and make a retraction. She did? Oh, how wonderful. Mm-hmm. But she said not to worry if it took her a few weeks. She doesn't see how she'll be able to contact more than nine or ten people a day. This is Judy Foster again. I want to wish over one million Girl Scouts in the United States a very happy birthday. This month, they're celebrating the 32nd year of that organization. From the youngest seven-year-old Brownie to the most adult volunteer, the Girl Scouts are pledged to service for their country. They're doing a super job. So please, everybody, let's all back the Scouts. A Date with Judy is written by Arlene Leslie and stars Louise Erickson and Dix Davis. The original music is composed and conducted by Tommy Peluso. The program produced and directed by Helen Mack. This is Art Baker inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday at the same time to keep your date with Judy, chaperoned by Tums, quick relief from acid indigestion. Get a roll tonight, only 10 cents at all drugstores. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles.